Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about compass bearing problems, which is a category of measurement and data. Today we're looking at angles and directions in a closer focus. So let's start off by reading the short description of what you might typically expect for angles and directions questions. So we can see that angles and directions in compass bearing problems involve the knowledge of cardinal points. You need to remember the positioning of the four traditional directions. An easy way to remember is north is at the top and glowing clockwise you read never eat so you eat bix standing for north, east, south and west. You may be required to write directions in true bearings or compass bearings. True bearings are written as three numbers and the degree of the angle clockwise from north. Cardinal bearings are written beginning with north and south and the acute angle which it forms with east or west. We're given two examples showing this here. For these questions, make sure to pay attention to the position in which a person in the question may be facing. You are often required to draw a compass diagram to help solve the question by visualizing the information that has been given. Okay, so compass bearing questions are essentially questions that are derived from our historical usage of compasses, and we still kind of use them to a degree today. Compasses are of course the very handy device used for navigation because a, in a compass its needle is, has been magnetized so that it always points toward north. So compass bearing um, knowledge kind of comes all from that real fact that the compass and needle will always point towards north. So that is why a lot of these calculations or the way uh, angles are expressed always are relative to where north is. Now, the description has told us a very handy hint of remembering which directions north, east, south, west are in, and that is the rule, never eat soggy wheat bix. And you'll see that the first letters of this fun little sentence match up with the first letters of north, east, south, and west. So the way you use that is you just draw a compass and you always start at the very top, and you think to yourself, never eat soggy wheat bix. So writing in a clockwise manner the first letters of the, the little fun sentence that we were given. And that will give you the correct positions of all the four cardinal points. On that note, cardinal points are just a fancy name for north, east, south and west. So knowing this will always be helpful for these types of questions. Now, we're told that there are two big ways of expressing direction, and that is in true bearings or in compass or cardinal bearings. They're basically the same thing, but they just kind of express the same number slightly differently. So true bearings are, like I said, remember the compass needle in real life always points towards north, and you use that needle to determine what direction you're currently facing. Based on that concept, true, true bearings start off at north and you see what direction you're currently in from north. So the angle 244 degrees true is in the southwesterly direction. So you start off here, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, and this is 64 degrees. So 90 plus 90 plus 64 should give us 244 degrees. Now, the other way of expressing that exact same direction is called cardinal or compass bearings. And that's also from the same concept of that real life compass needle. And that's generally because in a compass, you've got the needle pointing always towards north, but just to make things easier, there's also, the needle is also long and points in the opposite direction, which is south. So just having a direction from north or south can be read from the compass at all times. So that means you can express the direction from north or from south. So you always start from north or south. In this case, the smaller angle would be derived from when you're starting off south. So that is the 
direction. Uh, you can easily tell by looking at which side the arrow is closer to. So starting off with south, we are 64 degrees from south, so uh, in the westerly direction. So you write 244 true, true bearings as S64 degrees west. And we see the opposite uh, example with the second example here, where if you're dealing with a more northeasterly direction, then the true bearing is just the 58 degrees from north. Remember, true always starts from the north, so this is 58 degrees. Now, for uh, the compass bearing, we again either start off with the south or north and go with the, whichever the direction is closer to. So starting off in north, again, seeing what angle it makes with the easterly direction, it is still 58 degrees. So the compass bearing is north, 58 degrees east. So all of this shows us that seeing what direction we're pointing in is really, really easily represented with a diagram. And that is going to be one of the biggest tips I can give you for these questions. Always draw out all the information in the question so that you don't get confused with which directions you're working with. So let's see if we can put all our knowledge to the test with this example question. Madame is facing east and turns 750 degrees to her right, while Mr. is facing west and turns 1,035 degrees to his left. What angle and which way must Madame turn to face Mr.? Okay, so as always, starting off with the diagram of all the information presented in the question. I'm going to use my never eat soggy wheat bix sentence to remember which way the cardinal directions pointed. Then we're going to start off with Madame who is currently facing east. Or oh, Madame, sorry. And she turns 750 degrees to her right. So her right would be in this clockwise direction. Now, the fun thi funny thing is that if you turn a full rotation, you actually end up in the exact same easterly position you started off with. And we know that in one revolution, one revolution, there are 360 degrees. And 750 degrees is clearly composed of multiple revolutions. So let's see how many revolutions that is consisting of. So, oops, let's give ourselves more space to work with, 750 divided by 360. So 360 goes into 750 twice. So zero times two is zero, six times two is 12, and three times two is six plus one is seven. We've got a remainder of 30 degrees. So what that means is that we've got two full revolutions and then we turn an additional 30 degrees. So, uh, wait, we're turning to her right. So she would be turning in this direction, going one revolution, two revolutions, and then 13 more degrees. Sorry, that is more accurate. So now Madame is facing in this direction where this is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, let's apply the same technique to Mr. Mr. starts off west and he's turning to his left. So that would be in this direction. We need to figure out how many, how much he actually turns after all of his revolutions. So let's t see 1035 divided by 360. So 360 goes into 1035, I think, twice. So Two times 360 is equal to 720, and the remainder is 513. So he turns from west, turning left, one revolution, two revolutions, and then another 315 degrees. So this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, 
and this is the final 315 stretch. So the amount he's actually turned is going to equal this much, which is 45 degrees. If you're not sure where the 35 came from, that's just 315 minus 270 degrees, which is what this portion of the angle is equal to. And so the additional 45 should give you the original uh, degrees given. Okay, so now we actually know in which directions these two characters are facing it, Mr. So the question wanted us to figure out which direction must Madame turn, this way or this way, to see uh, which direction she will turn to face Mr. So if she faces uh, this way, and turns in this direction to face Mr. She needs to turn a total of 30 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 45 degrees. So that's going to equal to 165 degrees. And just to double check, let's see how much she turns if she turns the other way. So this way, that would be uh, this side would be 60 degrees, this side is 90 degrees, and this side is 45 degrees. So uh, 90 plus 60 plus 45 is equal to 195 degrees. So clearly this first direction was the direction she needs to turn to face Mr. with lace, the least amount of turning required. So that was to Madame's left. So that would be answer option C. Okay, so we saw in this question, all we needed to do was draw a diagram to see conceptually what was going on in the question. And that allowed us to fairly easily figure out the answer. So hopefully those are some techniques that are going to be helpful when you do your future angles and directions questions. Thank you everyone so much for listening.